Oh, all right. Uh, thank you, Alex, uh, for the nice intro. So, hey, welcome, everyone. Um, this is actually the first time I'm going to try one of my slidestorm style presentation via a virtual conference. Uh, I'm always uh, doing those uh, just with a live audience. So it's definitely an interesting ride. I hope it works. Um, maybe some of you have already seen one of my slide storms. So in this case, I have 181 slides for 18 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not joking. Um, so I really, uh, I'm really excited to see uh, if it also works um, in a virtual conference. Um, so yeah, as I said, 180 slides. So well, we better get going. Um, hi. I'm Marcus. On Twitter, I'm Mediodonis. Uh, I'm a proud dad. This is my son, Julius, and little Isabella, uh, and also my wife, Becky. Um, uh, I'm passionate about SEO. I have a pretty colorful past in the search marketing industry. I'm also the host at SEO Oktoberfest. Um, some of you might have heard of. Um, we've done it for the 10th time this year, and we're actually starting the SEO Oktoberfest G50 Summit uh, next year at Elmar Castle here in Germany. Um, I'm the founder and managing director at Right, um, which has formerly been known in onpage.org. Um, we've been around for five years. Um, so formerly known onpage.org, now we are Right, And as of today, almost 450,000 users from around the world are building better websites with the help of our software. We're pretty proud of that. Um, we are a team of 65 people now. As you can see, we love Fushing, the German version of Carnival. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but with this our lead developer, uh, Danny, right in the middle. Uh, we have recently completed our Series A funding round. Um, we've hey, we raised uh, 3.1 million uh, euros. Um, but enough from me. Uh, let's talk about Google Search Console, because I think most of you are here um, because of that. Um, formerly Google Webmaster Central, formerly Google Webmaster Tools, um, which launched as early as 2001. Uh, it looked a lot different back then was a simpler time. Um, today, it's a full-blown treasure suite and true treasure chest for SEO webmasters. Um, let's start with some basic stuff. Um, you can check your index status, so how many of your pages are actually indexed in Google. Um, this does not necessarily match the result of a site search command. As always, the number of results you see in search results is really just an approximation that's less accurate the more potential results exist. You can also identify crawl errors. If you have over 1,000, uh, I would recommend you to download all of them and mark them as fixed. And then you get new ones and, of course, old ones as well. Um, sometimes they are weird URLs listed, but it makes sense to explore what Google is criticizing. Um, you can also change the status code from expired pages from 404 to 410. 404 status code pages get crawled maybe five to six times, while 410 status code pages only get double checked if they are really gone. You can also test your robots.txt. I wish more people would take care of the robots.txt. I mean, it's your domain's house rules. Uh, it's always the first thing I look um, when I'm auditing a website. Um, Google also helps you with international targeting. Uh, of course, weapon of choice, the href length tag. Um, as you probably know, when you specify another language version, you also have to include the correct return tag. In Google Search Console, you can check if you're missing any of those return tags. With uh, Google Search Console, you also have the option to remove URLs. Uh, only temporarily, though, URLs are sort of faded out for a certain period of time. Um, it's actually about 90 days. Um, if you really want to remove a URL, you will have to slap no index on there. Within GSC, Google also encourages you to enrich your site results with rich cards uh, to be part of an enriched mobile search results. What started with rich snippets is being followed up with rich cards. Uh, Google is adapting to the new favorite mobile usage behavior, the Tinderization. Swiping has become a very popular usage behavior. In uh, Search Console, you can check the performance of your rich cards results. And, and getting structured data is becoming increasingly important for Google. Um, by the way, it makes sense to also work with the structured data testing tool if you work with structured data. Of course, the most awesome tool is Search Analytics. Um, there's an interesting passage in the 2001 Google Webmaster Tools page rank information section. Um, we update our index every four weeks. 
Um, this used to be called the Google Dance. Uh, coincidentally, Google Dance was also a name of a legendary party at the Googleplex. Um, you always got a great t-shirt. Um, I met Rand for the first time at Google Dance 2005, uh, and I took this uh, photo at Google Dance 2006. Uh, Matt Katz was really a rock star in our industry. The former head of web spam, now he works for the government. Uh, and that was something very important for Google because there is no spam, only bad algorithms. Um, and Matt is now working for the US government, and he had been fighting web spam at Google ever since 2000. Uh, back when web spam was still a lot different. Um, prior to that point in time, on-page optimization tips from many SEOs would have sounded something like this. Use your keywords heavily everywhere. Uh, I was also still on the dark side, but eventually I turned my back on black hat SEO techniques and became a convinced white hat. Before, I always used to say, you just have to throw enough shit at Google, something will stick. Um, the decisive moment was a blog post 10 years ago from my good friend, Rand Fishkin. And the post is called, Why I Love the Sordid Underbelly of the Search World. Uh, within this article, he wrote, there's Marcus Handler, who Google Dublin has been gunning for by name. I spare you the whole story. Of course, this has been a huge misunderstanding. Uh, it's not about that story anyways. It's about something different. Uh, Rand spelled my name wrong, which I was quite happy about since I wasn't really keen on ranking with my real name within this context. But someone else corrected him. Matt Cuts. <laughs> Fun post, but I think you got Tendler's name wrong. I believe it's Marcus, not Marcus. Oh, no. And you do know him by name. Thanks for the catch. Fixing now. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, I think my, my good friend Bob Rains sums it up quite perfectly. Oh, snap. Uh, of course, today he knows that I'm a true white hat, but he doesn't care. He works for the government now. Uh, back to the technical Google dance. Uh, results were static. Uh, and this finally changed with the caffeine update in 2010. Results finally became dynamic. Google was also finally able to make live ranking experiments with every single search. Uh, I can really recommend this fantastic talk from SMX West last year. It's called How Google Works. Uh, it's from Paul Haar. He's been a principal engineer at Google for exactly 15 years now. And this slide is especially interesting. He shows very clearly how Google uses user, usage, and interaction data to interpret the, the results of live ranking experiments. We do A-B experiments on real traffic, and then we're looking for changes in click patterns. We run a lot of experiments. It is very rare if you do a search on Google and you're not in at least one experiment. Of course, those are not all ranking experiments. Uh, Google famously tested 42 different shades of blue to find the optimal blue for the search result links. Paul also shared a funny anecdote in the Q&A about an experiment. So Google had an ongoing experiment just switching the position two and position four results. Um, so what do you think happened? <laughs> Uh, the click-through rate of the first result improved significantly. Um, since the number two result was really just number four worthy, the number one result looked even more shiny. It's all a huge performance test. Links might get you into the top 10, but all you get is a chance to prove yourself, to prove your really top 10 material. All users decide which search result is really the best. And this is where some webmasters stumble. Ouch. I think everyone knows these days how important the click-through rate has become. I was always a believer in click-through rate being a ranking factor. I was invited to speak at SMX Stockholm. Uh, my topic was SEO ranking factors in 2010. How much does that H1 tag really matter? <laughs> I shared a completely different theory. Um, these are my slides from back then. Um, here's a theory. I know it's a bit out there, but it just makes sense. CTR as a ranking factor. First reaction in the audience, I had a, what I thought, convincing theory about two very different sites ranking behavior for the same keyword, which led to my theory about how CTR could actually be a ranking factor, and at least in this case. Although I was loved at a lot. <laughs> um, I got quite some shit from the link building.
four months later, Google started showing this data in Google Webmaster Tools. I, ge I guess you can imagine how stoked I was about this. As you can see, Google Webmaster Tools used to show CTR data very granularly. Now you're only getting an average value. Total impressions are an aggregated result. So as you can see, it's really been only 46 unique searches. So the real CTR is 35%. If a site appears twice on a search result aggregating by site, it counts as a single impression. If I'm grouping by page or search appearance, each unique separately. No wonder nobody clicks on those ankle links. Uh, and by the way, as far as I know, the answer box result on top does not count, although it's the same URL. Please don't mind me showing you Search Console data from the on-page org uh, era. Uh, our brand and website relaunch has only been a few months ago, so I just have a lot more on-page org data. Um, the website relaunch went very well, though. Uh, we are already at a higher search visibility than before the relaunch. CTR and average position are aggregated as well, which can lead to confusing results when you're having site links. So first of all, Um, but the wiki article has an average ranking position of 10.1 with a whopping 26% click-through rate. I mean, we would all take that, right? 26% <laughs> on the position 10. Who wouldn't want that? Um, those site links only get displayed when the wiki article is the number one result, hence the open and, uh, open one 1.0 uh, average. And this explains the extremely high CTR for a 10.1 average result. And the overall 5.6 average is calculated by adding up the impressions from all individual pages times their average position divided by the total impressions count, in this case, adding up to 5.6. Don't worry about data discrepancies you might see, especially when you compare Google's two most important tools. Uh, here's an example, a pretty extreme peak. Uh, the term is click baiting. Um, with peaks like this, it's easy to do tests regarding the validity of the data. Um, by the way, it's resonating exactly with Google Trends. Uh, according to Google Analytics, it's been more than three times the amount of users. To protect user privacy, search analytics might not show all data. For example, they might not track some queries that are made a very small number of times or those that contain personal or sensitive information. There can be a lag of two to three days between when the numbers are calculated and when they are visible to webmasters. Time zones matter. Search analytics tracks daily data according to Pacific Daylight Time. If another system uses a different time zone, those views may not match exactly. Google Analytics shows time in the, local, in the webmaster's local time zone. Sometimes it's also the other way around. Some tools such as Google Analytics track traffic only from users who have enabled JavaScript in their browsers. I would like to show you some more patterns I see quite frequently when working with the Search Console. Um, let's start with multiple pages being displayed for the same keyword. Generally, you want only one page ranking for a keyword, ideally the best page. Um, stuff like this looks like trouble at first sight, but in this case, most of these pages were site links. Um, so of course, the home page was getting the most clicks. Um, in our case, the pricing page was the second most clicked, even before a free version. A little bit weird, though, right? Uh, every individual page gets, gets tested for performance with a certain share of search queries. Of course, there are also bad cases of multiple rankings. How can you identify problems? Uh, for example, cases of keyword cannibalization. Um, the best way is to filter for an exact query to find multiple pages ranking for that query. Um, here's a clear case. Two seemingly identical pages competing for the same keyword. Um, it's indeed the same page owed to an untidy wiki cleanup. Um, it's a clear case for a 301 redirect, combining the link power of both pages. You can also do very insightful comparisons. Um, let's start with the classic desktop versus mobile performance. Um, the CTR of our pricing page is more than three times higher with mobile searches. Uh, our on-page SEO wiki article as well, almost nine times higher CTR. And the best CTR, our team page. You can really see how a higher click-through rate corresponds with a better average ranking position. You can also identify performance tests with search analytics data. Um, here's an example. The search term is good SEO. Um, the contender is one of our wiki articles. 
And if I look at it from the outside, it seems like the page is bouncing heavily, not really seeing all too much page one action. Um, but if you take a look at the Search Console data, it's much more insightful. Check out this period of time, a pretty obvious top 10 performance test. Is this page really worthy of a permanent top 10 position? Unfortunately, these jumps into the top 10 weren't all too much successful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this goes on and on. Uh, of course, with a search term like SEO with naturally a lot of competition, it's hard to rank with Wikipedia type content on the first page, especially since Wikipedia is already ranking top one. Oh, by the way, I really hope I don't have to add that these jumps into the top 10 had absolutely nothing to do with links. These repeated jumps from the second to the first page are clear performance tests to see if you are permanent top 10 material. In my case, I failed. Well deserved. Of course, it's not just about a good CTR. When you have people convinced to click through to your site, now it's up to you to perform and satisfy their search need. Search Console also helps you find keyword opportunities. Um, the case here, Augenringe entfernen. Uh, so how to remove dark eye circles. Uh, 25,000 impressions, so it's quite juicy. Um, but the same page is also ranking for another related keyword, Augenringe unterspritzen. So injecting something to get rid of dark eye circles. Yeah, that's why I like German. You know, it's much more efficient, Augenringe unterspritzen. Uh, if you compare both search queries, I can see a lot of potential. Of course, it's a little bit less traffic, but when you're SEO by heart, you're always going for it all. Don't get fooled by traffic peaks. The term Augenring and Fern is always peaking around Christmas and New Year's. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, seems to resonate almost exactly with Google Trends in this case again. Um, a good performance is key. You can watch good performing pages moving up the Google ranks. But what happens if you don't perform well? A CTR of 3.7 on a position 2.8, that's not good. CTR of 0% on 3.7, 0% on 4.0, 0% on 7.4, 0% on 8.5. The lesson to be learned here is with great SEO, you get nothing more than a chance. If you get the chance, don't suck. Don't fuck it up. By the way, if you want to work more easily with Search Console data, you should definitely give our Search Success module a try. Um, just hit me up, and I set you up with a free account. This is slide number 181. You've done it. Thank you very much. Woo!